This is a December 1906 data production U.S. Army emergency ration prepared by the American Compressed Food Company out of Passaic, New Jersey. It weighs one pound, 4.4 ounces, or 580 grams, and it contains about 2,000 calories. Calculated to subside one man, one day, maintaining his full strength and vigor, not to be opened except by order of an officer or an extremity. Directions. Bread and meat component may be eaten dry or stirred into cold water, or one cake may be boiled five minutes or longer in three pints of water and resulting soup seasoned to taste, or one cake may be boiled in one pint of water for five minutes, making a thick porridge to be eaten hot or cold. When cold, it may be sliced and fried if bacon or other fat is available. Chocolate component may be eaten dry or made into liquid by placing the chocolate in a tin cup held in hot water. After melting, pour in slowly one pint boiling water to each cake. It may be boiled after mixing. Look at that can. This thing is 112 years old and it's in exceptional condition. Nearly flawless. Just a couple little scuffs. I mean, pretty much. This is one of the most amazing finds. Now, the U.S. Army emergency ration was produced by two different companies. The American Compressed Food Company out of Passaic, New Jersey. Also, Armor and Company out of Kansas City, Kansas. Look at this. It's a little bit different than the other one. U.S. inspected and passed by the Department of Agriculture. This one was produced in 1918 and was sent off to France during World War I. One of the million or so, but they never made it to France in time before the war ended. This ration was really only used in limited numbers during World War I. The main ration that was used, actually, was the U.S. Reserve ration. We'll get to that in a minute. You can see that this can is about 20 to 25 percent smaller than the American Compressed Food Company version. There were three different kinds of rations used in the trenches of World War I by the American Expeditionary Forces outside of hot meals from field kitchens. Any sort of actual ration pack, there were three of them. There was the trench ration, which was a huge tin, like an actual tin box, filled with canned food, hard bread, and various sides and certain things to pretty much make it a mobile field kitchen. There are none left. There may be like an actual tin box or two left somewhere. Other than that, they're gone. So the trench ration was one. And then there was the U.S. Army emergency ration. And that was the one prepared by Armour and Company out of Kansas City, Kansas. The one prepared by American Compressed Food Company, these things were utilized until procurements were exhausted. Same thing with this, but most of them that were produced didn't actually make it to France in time before the war ended. This thing has 1,492 calories. It weighs 15.4 ounces or 436 grams. This is the reserve ration. It's what eventually turned into the C ration or U.S. Army Field Ration C into the variations of the C ration up until 1980. It all started from the reserve ration. That weighs two and three quarter pounds. It has 3,349 calories. And, you know, this is actually a new corned beef. Now, here's the real deal. Hard bread, eight ounces, United States Quartermaster Corps. Cut this end out. Look at that, it's a soldered tin rectangular container. You get a pound of corned beef, the condiment can held your coffee, sugar, and salt, which was also part. This thing evolved throughout the 20s and 30s and turned into the U.S. Army Field Ration Type C by 1938. The U.S. Army Emergency Ration was taken out of the U.S. military's list of actual rations used by 1922. Alright, to sum it up real fast for the pros and cons, this thing weighs two and three quarter pounds. The average soldier was carrying two of these around in his haversack all the time. That's five and a half pounds. That's quite a bit of weight. 
It's also a lot of calories. That's a good amount of food. The emergency ration weighs just under a pound. It has 1,492 calories. It's pros, really. It's, it's light, calorie dense, compact, long shelf life. But then it's cons, not enough were produced in World War I and available. And then just overall more complex production. And only two plants, two actual companies were capable of making it. The reserve ration, this thing is easier to make. More factories could make it. it could be more easily mass produced. But this is heavy and bulky. Five and a half pounds for two days worth of food when it's still just under two pounds for two day, days worth of that. But probably about 40% of the calories, but it's filling and sustainable for a few days, you'll be okay. Restricted calorie 24 hour ration that is ahead of its time, built to last, and with some relative morale boosting components. Pemmican, that's not too bad with your various preparation options along with some chocolate. And that derived from the idea of the British Emergency Ration Field Service, which goes back as far as the late 1800s. Back in 1897, May of 1897, the first cavalry out of Fort Sill, Oklahoma, tested the first reserve ration. Back then, the hard bread, they were just in paper, cardboard boxes, and, you know, rain would make them turn to mush. Gas attacks and rats and bugs and whatnot and just getting trampled on, so they were tinned primarily to protect against gas attacks. The haversack ration, this was your original nomenclature. This one's a reproduction. I've only ever seen one in existence, a real one. This, instead of being like a wax dip box that can get squashed and, you know, not super easy to produce actually, you know, mass produce. Instead, they would just have large portions of coffee, sugar, and salt, and then allot them for the soldier to store in their condiment can. And these things were typically ditched. And a lot of times ground coffee was replaced with instant coffee. But we're going to be checking out the reserve ration in its by the book manner, at least the first time around. Now, in order to give soldiers experience with this ration and to maintain production quotas at an economically feasible rate for the armor plant to stay in business, it was suggested to produce an average of three per soldier for use on training missions per year. And this proposition was rejected by the U.S. Army and the U.S. ended up adopting the reserve ration for mass production instead. The hardbread tins weren't too difficult to make. This compressed and vacuum sealed pemmican and chocolate, super advanced for a hundred years ago. But the U.S. Army figured troops shouldn't be compelled to use this thing, you know, simply to become familiar with it. It was thought that it was time to use it only in war and in emergency. So this idea led to a shortage of these during World War I. They really could have used more. This ration cost me $1,400. This one cost me 768 and it's in better shape, much better shape. Look at all that yellow paint. They double coated it on the seams as a pull tab. It's a beaut. We're going to open it up. There was never a key attached to this that I can Fine, no soldering marks or anything like that. All right, here goes nothing. Let's lift that tab. Nice hiss. Oh man. pretty tough. <sighs> it 
it's definitely a rash and you don't want this key to fail on you. But we'll get this thing open. Whoa, look at that piece of cotton. One bit at a time here. Almost. Okay, I think this is it. Look at the condition. So this paper packet, no idea what that packet is, but this looks like something you pull to get this all out. Boy, I hope this works. Oops. And that is actually the pemmican that I cut into and cannot get this, what is supposed to be a fabric kind of like a strip of fabric you pull up that lifts up the, the pemmican. Let's see if we can get this out or is this just gonna be a strip that, what happens here? That did nothing but just pull out that whole thing, which may have freed up some space. Hold on. Let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. It's much better. Wow, look at that. That is pemmican and in pretty good looking shape on. Oh, I know that kind of smell. It's not so bad. Pull off this old paper. Gosh, I can't believe that paper is 112. It's just like a fine, weak paper. And look at that. Whoa, you can see it. it's the, look at the grain. That is total pemmican and does not smell that bad. I'm not even joking. This seems so well preserved. It's almost unbelievable. Man, what is this? That is really cool. Seasoned taste. The one thing it says soup seasoned to taste. Could this just be salt? I'm going to go back to that. This is just what an experience. Can you believe this? I just Look at that. And that is salt. And that's some of the best salt I've ever tasted. Because it's so old. Alright, so. Whoa. Let's chisel some of this out. You know. Whoa, that's coming out pretty easy. You know, this isn't so bad. Wow, wheat and dried beef powder. What a great amount of food. You know, this would be extremely filling, I would say. And look at that, that's one of the cakes. So we're gonna go with this for a starter of sorts. I'm gonna figure this out here. You know, you can eat it dry, of course, and it's all ready to eat, technically. If you didn't have the capability or the luxury to heat this up, once I remove this one, it might be easy to get the rest out. Yeah, look at that. That comes out easy. That's aluminum foil. You know, that was really expensive back then. See that? All right, so let's get that last bit out of there. So it's like a cheap, fine paper that would hold it together, each meat and grain cake. There's one right there. It just smells like, it re really reminds me of the smell of fish food. 
That's that is exactly what that smells like. Fish food. Wow, not fish or dried fish, just food for fish. Let's move along here. Oh. Okay. And that is, I believe, that just didn't work out too well right there. It feels like it's pepper, and it's a smaller amount in like a season packet. And then what flew up here is, I believe, the chocolate. Yeah, you can tell that's chocolate. Like, just barely. Hold on, let me just, let's get this out onto a tray. Nice. Okay. That is chocolate. Look at, look at, right in there. Oh man, that's so cool. Hold on, I gotta take a tiny bite right now. Hold on. It's not bad. I'm letting it settle on my tongue. Okay, I just consumed a small amount of chocolate from 1906. Here, hold on. That chocolate. Okay, it smells like the bouillon powder. It's beef powder, you know, actual whole beef turned into powder mixed with, you know, wheat. But, I mean, it smells like that. That's off-putting, like, completely. Completely bloomed. Sorry. You know what? <laughs> what a strange chocolate. A little bit spicy. With whole pieces of cocoa that are not fully mixed in. That's what that was. I felt something coarse. Once moisture hits it again, it really gets its, you know, normal chocolate appearance back to a degree. That doesn't taste bad at all. I mean, you're definitely picking up the, the meat and wheat components undertones, but, you know, they kind of mixed together. They've been sitting next to each other for 112 years. Again, with a spicy flavor. Like, a relative amount of spicy. I'm not joking. It almost seems like there's a small amount of cayenne in here. I'm, I mean, I've had hot chocolate like that. Sorry, I'm like eating this like weird. Mm. How strange. I mean, there are so many people would, that would love to try this. I know it. I mean, it's fine chocolate that had little bits of, you know, cocoa or cacao in it. Cacao bits, like little, not nibs, you know, those little things that are like little cacao nibs you'll, you'll have in certain chocolate. Not that chunky, but very tiny pieces of um, cacao. And then something relatively spicy. Wrapped in aluminum foil. Gosh, there's actual pieces that still look like chocolate. You see those darker kind of shiny bits? Like that actually still kind of looks like chocolate. Look at that. I'm going to save this. Look at that chocolate. It actually looks fine. Get it in layers. Okay, so we got to the bottom of that one. That was fast.
Okay, so it goes in layers. You'd pretty much for each meal have a meat and grain cake and then a chocolate cake. And when I say cake, that is, you know, each one of these little foil or paper wrapped allotments of food. It's, it's a perfectly preserved ration when it comes down to what it is. I don't think, I really don't think that it could be in any better shape, really. This is incredible. I, I don't feel like the pemmican is spoiled. I think that's fine. I think every bit of that is edible. I'm going to go all out with this thing. I'm going to eat. What is this anyway? Is this... This this is pepper, and I'm going to figure it out pretty soon. It's coated in chocolate. Let's get this off. Aha, there we go. Cool. Oof. Oof. I went and put my nose right in, I believe, black pepper. Yep, that's what that is. That used to be black pepper, I think. Uh, yeah, that's, that's black pepper. And, you know, that could be why the, um, chocolate tastes spicy. We're gonna go down the line with preparations for both. I'm gonna eat some more of this chocolate dry, but then I'm also going to make a, what they are pretty much suggesting, maybe eaten dry or made into liquid by placing the chocolate in a tin cup held in hot water. After melting, pour in slowly one pint of boiling water, they're pretty much telling you to do a makeshift double boiler method with your tin cup, and we got one of those here. You see this mess kit, this one's a beaut. Rock Island Armory, 1910. Rock Island Armory, 1908, tin cup. Okay, and we're back with another episode where you never know what you're going to be having when you come over to my place for dinner. Look at that piece. But I actually kind of want a piece of this just right off the bat. Like, look at that thing. Yeah, this smells like fish food. Of course, I'm apprehensive to eat a piece of this. Infantry Cavalry Equipment Board tested out one of these things when it was like 20 years old. The pemmican component was perfectly fresh and the chocolate was somewhat bloomed, but otherwise still edible. You can clearly see coarse grain, just barely any kind of real shade or difference of color or anything. Look at that stuff. I mean, it really does. It seriously smells like fish food. Like, and probably not too far off in actual, you know, food quality. I wouldn't doubt it whatsoever. I mean, like, The other one says, approved by the, wait, this is like, something like approved by the Department of U.S. Agriculture. U.S. Department of Agriculture approved. Just off the top of my head here, I just can't really. Uh, that's exactly what I figured it tastes like, dirt. Wait. Sorry. There's a little more flavor than dirt. Yeah, you're not supposed to eat this dry. I mean, I say you can eat it dry, but there's quite a bit of flavor, actually. taste the wheat. That's gross. Oh. Like, the beef. That's not bad. Man, that's actually, you know what? 
No, I say it's gross and it's not bad. It's gross. But it's edible, I think. Wow. Well, I keep saying it smells like fish food, but I get so much of it. I didn't, there's so much grain, like bits of grain all on my tongue. Like grain, I don't want to chew because you would just crack your tooth on it. It needs to soften up with hot water. If you didn't have hot water, you could soak it in cold water and that would be good enough. I would do that before eating it dry. This is like the World War I equivalence of eating a food packet long range patrol, freeze dried mains, dry. Yeah, so this would be kind of like hardcore even back then just on its own. You wouldn't eat it dry. Unless you were just downing it with water right afterwards because you were having to be on the move, you know, and you were in combat, like they say, in extremity. Like say even your officer got killed and you're on the move. That's extremity enough, you know. Say you've not eaten for a couple days, you bust one of these things out. But again, hold on. Mmm. It's so earthy with grain. An earthy grain with a dull beef flavor. Sorry for talking a mouthful, but I really want to taste and give you the immediate. Too bad these weren't produced in higher numbers. Because, uh, you know, during before World War I and stocked up. They would have done well to do that. This would have been a great ration for that war. It just never really got used. It did, but not nearly enough. Because, uh, sorry, I just, so much coarse grain, I got no water. It's like, it just makes your heart race eating something that old every time. I mean, that old, you know, not World War II by this point, I think I'm kind of numb to it. Like I get, you know, World War II ration, it's even a little bit on the iffy side and it won't freak me out too much. But this, it never fails. Like that field service from 1899, man, I just really broke up in the fish food. Wait, this is also kind of spicy. I think the pepper permeated through everything. It seems fine. You know, really. Okay, here's how you do it. Visual, smell, and then taste test. In that order. Again, very earthy. This is edible. This is edible. Oh, no. This is even just kind of edible. Like that emergency ration field service. I don't think I'll ever do anything like that again. This doesn't come close to that on iffy. This is fine. That's actually somewhat flavorful toasted grain with a kind of bland, dull beef powder that doesn't have enough sodium, but they give you that sodium. They give you that pack of salt. This is incredible. This actually isn't bad. It's so brittly. Oh, sorry. I barely even got a bite on that. Oh, yeah, it's breaking up so much. Dude, the toasted grain. I'm really trying to get a good solid flavor on it, and it's just such an earthy, strong, toasted wheat. It's coarsely ground. There really aren't any dried pieces that aren't you know, just breaking apart before I can even get it to my mouth. But you could eat it with a spoon dry. If you added hot water and made a porridge, like they're saying, I'll bet that's really good. This is really going far beyond my expectations on... Uh, what is that? That's just, yeah, like there's tons of grain. Like that's just like a hard piece that you can barely see there, but you know, like... Definitely not recommended to eat dry. 
it's not good on your teeth. And again, it's just, it's so brittly. And you can see, is that grain or here? I don't know. Hard as a rock. And I'm telling you, no, that's like wheat. It's starting to soften up. Or I don't know what it is. But anyway, the point is, you can technically eat this dry, but it's like eating a hard cereal that needs to really soften up. It's like eating uncooked oats or something with, you know, dried beef powder added. I'm still wrapping my mind around all this and trying to... I want a piece of chocolate. Let's, it's just... Hmm. Little bits of cacao. Here's aluminum. Let's not eat that. But this, look at that. Look. Sorry, I, once you get moisture on it. Okay, and we're back. It's been about 30 minutes, and I feel perfectly fine. Let's make some soup. It's just awesome. This piece, though, I'm going to eat that. Mmm. I better throw the three pints in there. Okay, so we've got some water heating up. Then I'm going to add that pemmican. One cake may be boiled five minutes or longer in three pints of water and resulting soup season to taste. Boiled for five minutes or longer. Okay, so the pot is at a nice little simmer. That looks good. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add about two thirds, because that's two pints, not three. I'm going to save some of this for my collection. Like a souvenir. That looks good. Really doesn't smell too bad. Could not find my mess kit spoon, so I just got a regular spoon from the the, the drawer in the kitchen. Oops. So look at that. Soup. You can kind of see the color, you know, like there's the, the beef bouillon part and then the grain and how it's separated. There's still some beef in that. Powder part. Ooh, look at that. Maybe boiled five minutes or longer. We'll let it boil for a little bit longer. Check out that foam here. This really isn't so bad. It's not even all that weird to me, really. This is just an extremely well preserved ration that is incredibly old. And this is just an astounding overall food discovery when it comes down to food storage. A vacuum sealed container that was 112 years old that stored food that well to where you could make this porridge stuff and not stink up a room. Somebody asked me like, what is that? What am I cooking here? I'd say, you're cooking something old. All right, so what we're gonna do is let that boil for a little bit. It's just simmering away, or boiling away, or whatever you wanna call it. I got it more on a rolling boil. Decided to 
really step it up a notch here. It's been like this for about one minute. And it doesn't smell too bad. As this boils, you can really smell it. I mean, it doesn't seem like it smells too far off from what it really is. Man, that's interesting. Oh, the direct steam is not too bad. Again, just a foodie kind of steam. You know, just really, well, let's get a good look at this. Ooh, I think I need a paper towel. Alright, so let's get a good look at this. Just an earthy grain and cheap beef kind of stew. It does not smell spoiled. It doesn't give me any kind of gag reflex or anything like that. It's been boiling for about seven or eight minutes, maybe, and I'm gonna let it boil for at least 10. I'm gonna free up that mess kit and save this. That's like gold. Seriously, this is valuable. Nearly priceless, really. Okay, so I've taken this down to about a simmer. It's been about 15 minutes. It smells like something's cooking. That's a bunch of soup. Look at that grain. Really kind of actually gosh that's so it's just pretty much like a grain porridge you know or soup with a beef broth as you can see breaks down essentially and cooks and look at that stuff kind of boiled off to the sides. It's just started getting weird. I'm gonna let that cool off for a second. Here, let's try a little bit. Just, you know, for starters here. It just smells very grainy, like a strong toasted grain, again, but even more amplified. And the broth itself is just criminally under seasoned you know i mean just flavor wise it's just tastes like a that's like a combination of sewage water and like a grain tea you know like some kind of weird you're trying to quit drinking coffee and you try out these like coffee wannabe grain soluble drinks and they all taste kind of weird. This reminds me of that, like health food store. I can't, I don't know, it's just a, it's a grain broth with like hardly any real flavor to it. The grain has rehydrated and this stuff is I think pretty much ready you know as ready as it's gonna get and um, I haven't seasoned it you know I'm not gonna use any of the pepper but I will use some of that salt so I'm gonna do that let's grab some of that here yeah this is pretty cool because this ration is still edible and to the point where I'm not too nervous. I'm apprehensive, you know, it's just going against um, instincts, I guess. The grain, man, this thing's awkward to hold. The grain is near flavorless. But it's like cooked, you know, it's a nice texture. 
you have to cook it otherwise it's going to crack your teeth you're not going to actually process it very well i mean even though it was roasted grain it's just, it would just probably be rough on your system how much of this am i really going to actually eat i wore the wrong shirt for this thing all right so gotta say wait a few steps up from the emergency ration field service when it comes down to being palatable it's a little bit more advanced it's a lot more advanced because this is properly stored it's a vacuum sealed ration it's under five percent moisture content overall which is still kind of high well this reminds me of a Russian ration with some of the stuff you'd get maybe like the Russian mountain ration some of the um, breakfast grain cereals that you can get that are dried they're the closest thing I've ever had to this and that's so much more normal and palatable it has salt speaking of salt we'll add some let's add some flavor to this a little bit of salt probably goes a long way Oops. Ooh, that was way too much. Oh, let's just add some salt, much needed salt, to this bland soup. Okay, live it up here. Porridge stuff. Oh, that it works wonders with the flavor. It's just a very interesting grain soup porridge. It's beef powder that's just dried and to the point where it really just turns into bouillon, like beef stock. And that's pretty much what it is. And then mixed with grain. And that's it. It tasted actually, oddly enough to me, better dry. But then I was worried about cracking a tooth. You know, uh, I think here's the thing. I caught on the roof of my mouth. Sorry, this would definitely do the trick. Like I read, it was very filling. I mean, 1492 calories for the one that was smaller than this, you know, by 20 to 25 percent. You know, this is, I would say, undoubtedly a solid 2000 calorie overall. I just keep going back for it and I'm using a house spoon because I am not joking when that was boiling I'm looking around everywhere and I cannot find my mess kit spoons which I'm kind of glad because I was just using it like I don't know two weeks ago eating a B unit that 1917 spoon just smells and tastes so off it actually makes this seem pretty normal I think that would have really taken away from this as an experience so I'm pretty glad I'm more normal mm. you know a nice house spoon a ration from December 1906 sitting in the pot I don't know it's heavy I'll say that it's just like if I were eating this in a survival situation <laughs> sorry I can't even keep it straight if I were eating this in a survival situation I'd definitely be wanting to sit down, you know, like, I'm just standing here in the corner of a room like a really weird dude, eating old food. Look at that. Hmm. That is just all grain. It's like grain cereal and beef stock. I'm not too excited or thrilled about the actual soup part. But the porridge or you know the grain this is really good you know this is actually <sighs> i could have set it in the mess kit thing it's just it's all this soup the porridge will be better than that thing this pot that's gonna be good for the soup i think i just don't know i guess i'm gonna have to use another pot for when i do the porridge which i think 
might be in like a couple days or something. I'm going to see how I feel from this. It's one of those things you just kind of need to gauge, you know, you kind of go move as, move as you go along or I don't go as you move along. Just pretty much go as you eat little bits. It doesn't seem too bad. Well, I'm just going to bring this back over for a minute. This is a truly amazing historical piece that would have just probably rotted away. You know, who knows what would have happened to this thing. I mean, it sits somewhere. Nobody knows what's inside of it. Nobody learns anything. All right, so back over here. Look how much there is. It really just portions out. And you can see how there's this like bouillon low in sodium. You, you can add the sodium as you need it. You may not want a whole bunch of sodium. You may be critically low on water, and who knows what your situation may be. Probably some of the most dire of survival situations were occurring if this thing was used. Hmm. Like 1918 era war survival. I mean, really, who knows what kind of and it just had to have been so brutal and bizarre. But this is not super appetizing. It's just like a gross beef cereal. A watery, raw sewage beef cereal flavor. Mmm. That like could really use some onion powder. And I mean, I should be doing that. You know, I should just go into my spice rack and add some various stuff but that just kind of seems cheap i just keep going i i don't really need to keep eating more of them i'm not even really describing it let me describe let me just have a very small like i don't need to put myself through a excuse me huge bite here or anything yeah it's just a a wheat cereal sorry showing food particles, you know, but I'm trying to give you an idea. It's like a soft wheat cereal. I can't believe it. This thing was preserved, man. It might be not only just edible, but sustainable as it ever was. You know, I mean, this, this could be just as sustainable as it was when it was initially produced. I mean, it could be providing just as much nutritional value or very close to it. My mouth's just filled with all this grain sticking to the roof of my mouth. Excuse me, it's not like some horrible flavor that you, know, you just don't want to ever experience again, or a smell that you never want to have to smell again. It's not like that. It's just like a cheap grain soup with weird, look at that gross, it's fat. That's beef fat along the edge there. I don't know what to do with this pot of slop. Look how this moves. That grain. And it clouds up with the beef fat. Beef bouillon. I'm going to leave everything on the set and come back over to it and, and just go ahead and make some porridge and hot chocolate and then let some porridge cool down. I'm gonna slice it and fry it in bacon fat. But right now I gotta take a nap. All right, so it's been two days and I feel perfectly fine. I will admit under physical exertion, I did have a little bit of reduced energy, but that's probably from fatigue. I didn't get enough sleep the last couple days. That's probably all it was. This is a perfectly edible ration. I had no ill effects whatsoever, just potential sluggishness that's it but other than that i'm good maybe try and pull a little bit of a shaking try and shake it out a little bit movement nice a four ounce pemmican cake awesome glad i could extract one I believe it's chocolate that's sprinkled off. 
onto the tray. Let's try and get the chocolate. Look at that chocolate in there. Hold on. It just still smells like the beef powder, which is an interesting thing. We'll talk about that in a minute. What it's how how the process goes with that one. Right, let's just pull the foil. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that. I mean, it's not very intact at all. We're just gonna have to get this out. Look at that. Got a good portion of that bar out. So cool. Here, let's eat a piece of chocolate. Will it be spicy? No, it's not. I didn't think it would be. It was the black pepper that made it spicy. There's no cayenne or anything like that in the chocolate. It's just sugar and chocolate, you know, sugar and cocoa. Mm. Anything that's turned to complete powder is gonna be a perfect candidate for any kind of cooking or what have you. Look at all the different solid pieces. With this ration, soldiers did become familiar with it, the 1906 was thoroughly tested in the field. This was, at the time, the most advanced survival ration in the world. In the summertime, soldiers would go on practice marches and they would travel between four and 500 miles. They would use this ration and it was satisfactory. It kept them sustained. And this is not the oldest model. This thing goes back as far as 1901 and this ration was in development for years. An older one was tested in 1901 by 56 men for five days in the field. It was so effective that some of these guys even gained weight. One and a quarter pound ration, about 2,000 calories. These guys probably weren't eating as much back then, some of them, so they actually gained some weight. Let's just add a little bit of water to this. I'm very curious to see how this will just mix like that. I think that's why they say to like melt it, double boiler method. Like you really do actually almost have to melt it. I'm gonna see how that goes. But I am gonna mix this up too and just try some out. Yeah, let me just try a little spoonful. This is so cool. Hmm. That's not too bad. That's really not bad. I can't believe it. It's the oldest hot chocolate. This is the oldest chocolate I've ever consumed. Hmm. I cannot. I just, I'm telling you. Hmm. I'm gonna have another round of that right now. Impeccable. Very smooth, good quality hot chocolate. I mean, that was just absolutely decadent. Truly, 100%. Do like that much. Set this cup in there, it's just kind of weird. I guess so, I don't know, like, what's gonna happen? Kind of floating around. That doesn't even seem like it works. Oh wow, it does. Look. It totally works. Never mind. Look. I 
amazing. That's melting. Look at that. It's like I'm gonna make a 112 year old chocolate fondue. Hmm. That is sweet chocolate. Here, let's get it a little bit hotter. I think it needs to be. We need it hot. And let's scoop some more in there too. Pick out the aluminum because that's unhealthy. Maybe just a little bit of water. Adding that to it would help. I have a feeling that will. Look at that. I need a piece of chocolate while I'm waiting here. You know, a lot of times when chocolate is bloomed, it's just not very good. This is actually good chocolate. Like, actually such good quality that it's even good when it's bloomed. Pretty sure it's working. I think I'm going to try that out. <laughs> it's delicious chocolate. It is 100%. Oh, and it melts. It just tastes like fondue chocolate. A little bit gritty ever so slight little bits of chocolate still but oh this is so incredible doing fondue chocolate this is actually working the double boiler method they suggest actually works we're going to have that go along there for a minute. Oddly enough, when that was melted, that was some of the most delicious chocolate I ever had. Oh, and I weighed the salt. It was about 21 grams. And the pepper is a gram. It's a pretty slow process. But it works. It's working. Just add a little bit of moisture back into this. Yeah, wow, look at that. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Added just a little bit of water, and it's like chocolate syrup. Let's get this out of the, the pot and back onto this tray. Okay, the cup's cooled off a little bit. That looks so good to me. I don't know why, that's just like total ration goodness. You know, that weird allure of a snack that you can't find anywhere else. This is amazing. That's like, that's like pudding, pretty much. I'm gonna try a bite, just like, just like this. It's, it's melted chocolate. It's like any other delicious melted chocolate. Mmm. With absolutely nothing off-putting about the flavor. Actually, it's strange. I can't taste the pepper anymore. That was just an initial thing. I don't taste that anymore. And that was the black pepper that permeated into this. It just made it spicy at first. It was strange how that worked. Look at that. It's, it's melted chocolate. It's starting to solidify again a little bit. But like... 
I mean, I know I'm just going to add hot water to it, but this is something I got to just enjoy a little bit. It's kind of like when you're baking cookies and there's the batter. And even though there's, you know, raw egg, you know, you don't care and you just eat a good portion of it anyway. I feel like I'm just going to end up eating it like this. It's so... It's 112, 112 years old. I've eaten chocolate that has like old dried milk and it's just not appealing. I mean, what is this? How is this not spoiled? I mean, that vacuum hiss was perfect. It was... It's just a perfectly preserved ration. I just... I never would have guessed I'd have a perfectly preserved ration. It's a hundred, like anything really over, anything really over, you know, 75 years old is absolutely incredible for being preserved, but not this old. I never would have expected it. Hmm. Okay. I, I got it. I guess add hot water. What I'm probably going to do is just add more powder and just add hot water and mix up cocoa. But this was fun. <laughs> Man, all right. Let's do that. You know, while that's boiling, I'm just gonna see if, oh wow, this is gonna come out very easy, I think. I guess it's chocolate. Oh, wow. Nice. Now that last chocolate, that's gonna be hard to remove, like, gonna have to just wedge that one out again the chocolates bloomed to where it won't pull out all right so what I'm gonna do here is add a little bit of boiling water to this not too much That is rich hot cocoa right there. I mean the chocolate is like this smooth, that's silky smooth hot chocolate. It's like, I don't think there's milk solid in here. I think it's just cocoa and sugar. And then solidified into cubes. I believe that's what it is. Because this is like, this reminds me of Spanish ration hot chocolate. So I'm pretty sure there's no milk in there, and that's why it's still good. Almost certain that's what's going on here. And it's 50% cocoa, 50% sugar, and compressed into these cubes. I believe that's what it is, and I don't even think it's like regular bloomed chocolate. Because it's not rancid at all. There's no rancidity, no nothing that's like turned or off-putting with the flavor. Perfectly drinkable hot chocolate. I want to have a sip of this. Yeah, it's delicious. And I'm going to add some more boiling water here. Let's do that. I think that mixed it in. Look at that. It's kind of watered down now, I think. Oh yeah, it's extremely watered down now. I kind of ruined it. Man, it was good before. I think the allotment that they tell you for a pint, that's kind of ridiculous because this is just a few ounces and crazy how the water just really is what makes it just come back into form. I mean, like, watch this. Actually looks pretty good. That is... That piece tasted like black pepper. Okay, so some of it still does. That was from the first chunk anyway.
All right, so it's pretty watered down now. It has not nearly as much flavor. I'm going to add, I'm gonna save that chocolate bar essentially is what that is. This is all going in here. There's that little bit where water smudged. Look how much it sticks with water. It's like a chocolate paste. Look at that. It's either very little milk powder or none at all. Cocoa powder with sugar. Some of the cocoa powder seemed to have reformed slightly and also absorbed or had a flavor transfer of the black pepper in the first cake. In the second one, it tastes pretty much like 100% of chocolate. And that's what I put in this second round to kind of give it a little more chocolate strength. Yeah, it's like kind of watery. A lot of people would consider this to be watery, bland, hot cocoa. Yeah, there are these little bits of chocolate that are still not 100% mixed. And that's why it's suggested to do the double boiler method. You can make that chocolate, you know, paste, essentially, that way. That's really good. Go ahead and unwrap one of these. We're gonna make some porridge. It's cooked wheat, you know, kiln dried with the outer hull of the bran removed, parching it and grinding it in coarse powder. And then it's cooked in steam, hand crushed, and then put back in the kiln and dried again, and then parched again, and to where there's no more grit. The beef is fresh, lean beef, free of most fat and sinew. It's ground in a meat grinder and then put through an evaporation process. Wow, that is just... I hate to even break this up. There's just a real satisfying nature about its perfect shape. I mean, that is just... It still smells strong. It has a strong smell of pepper. Yeah, but the evaporation process the beef is put through, it manages to not cook it at all. And then it's carefully sifted. That just feels like breaking a sandcastle. So they say it can be boiled in with a pint of water. So let's do that. Put the whole thing in there. Here's two minutes in. Has a nice grain smell to it. Wow, 
Wow, when it's the porridge, it, I feel like I wasted it as a soup. As a soup, it's just not that great. I mean, if you have ample water and you need to stretch it, and you know, for hydration purposes, and you know, if it was just a cold, rainy day or something, maybe the soup would be great if I added a lot more salt to it, which I didn't. And the soup was boiled for like 20 minutes. This'll be, this is like three minutes in now. Does not smell bad. It smells mostly like grain with like a light beef. And it smells better than that top layer. It's weird. I don't want it to gorge. Wow, that stuff really absorbs the water so well. And when it says five minutes, I think it's serious when it says five minutes. It means it. Actually, it's been seven minutes, maybe. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of water so it doesn't scourge. Let's add that water. Turn up the heat again, put it on the max. Look at that, just kind of smooth it out. That's as good as it's gonna look. Make it nice and salty. Oh yeah. I can definitely see how it'll work once it's chilled and then sliced and fried. I can't wait to do that. I got bacon fat. I always save bacon fat in my fridge. I always have it on hand. That stuff's great for cooking. Look at that. I don't want it to score. I think it's good. Just on that brink, you know? This turned into the weirdest cooking show. Okay. Look at that. It's like an awesome, almost like paste. Yeah, it's starting to like stick to the bottom of the pan. That's the sign right there of a ready porridge. Nice and hearty. All right. I'm just gonna set this like on this tray for a sec. Okay. Yeah, this like actually kind of smells bad. It's starting to smell off again. It's like it's stinking up the room in that same kind of way that the um, refrigerator was smelling when I had this pot in there before and I just decided to toss it. I don't know. It's just not the most appealing thing in the world. I just won't put it on the tray. I don't know why. It's like I say, I guess it's like the tray is the base, the home base that you put the dry product on. But then from there you dump it in the pot. So. It's been like that. I guess maybe with the patties we'll put it on the tray. But this is just... Oh, oh man. Okay, so really, I mean... Hey, the salt really helped. Putting a fair amount. Ooh, hot. Hmm. Alright, so... The beef cooks in with it. The grain, even with the extensive process that it goes through, it's still pieces will get caught in your mouth. It's 
so it's like a meat paste mixed with a, a somewhat coarse wheat, you know, that rehydrates, softens up. Ooh, hot. Oh, what is that? Is that on the bottom? It must be just like scraping. I don't know. Who cares? Whatever it is, it's it's all the same. It doesn't smell too foul. Actually, it smells a little bit foul. Never mind. You have that emanating smell in the room, and it tells you this isn't appealing. Probably just not good quality to begin with. You know, it says lean beef, but I don't know. I mean, how good could it possibly be? It's not like they're giving them some kind of gourmet quality beef. I don't know. I don't like it. I really don't. As a porridge, it's pretty rough. Actually, I think it's worse than... Why is it so itchy? Maybe I heated it too long. Jeez. Okay, so these things, soldiers took good care of their emergency ration because if they lost it or if they took it and just ate it when they weren't supposed to they were do they were actually docked pay because they had to check in with their officer uh, routinely to do an inventory check and that included the ration He's mashing it around. All right, here's the thing. I don't know if I want to eat a lot of this. The way it is right now, it's just not appealing flavor-wise. It's still very just dull, a dull grain flavor. It's almost still best dry. It, it tasted better for some reason. I don't know how, but the grain itself tasted a little more like earthy and natural. And I'm just mashing this down. It's just. It molds quite nicely. It kind of reminds me of mashed potatoes, the way this is going down here. Um, I think most of the problem is it's just under-seasoned. Hmm. Sorry for the wimpy bite, but... A metallic metal flavor. Dull beef, again. Very just dull and not of good quality or just acceptable beef flavor. It's just a very weak metallic beef. The grain is nice. It has its own, like I mentioned, earthy quality to it. Uh, you know, it's that saying, putting lipstick on a pig. But then again, bacon fat, so we'll try that out. Okay, so it's been, oh, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes. I put this porridge in the fridge to chill. That looks good. Look at that. That's working out. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna enjoy some bacon fat. They say you can slice it and fry it if bacon or other fat is available. So that's what we're gonna do. Ooh, it's popping around and stuff. 
Oh, look at that. Maybe you turn it down a little bit or something. Uh oh. It's like popping like popcorn. Is that normal? Or maybe I just have too much oil. You know, I'm trying to live it up here. It's gotta be done right. Here, let's throw some salt on it. That'll make it better. Here, oh yeah. Okay, so like, mmm, you know it has a great smell of bacon. That's just, oh, and look at that salt. That's the way to do it. Oh, the bacon is popping everywhere. Here. Oh. I don't think it's supposed to go like that. Okay. So let's just set and grease in the main pot. There we go. Can you imagine how incredible this would have been in a survival situation if you happen to have bacon fat available? I mean, geez. But yeah, so here's the thing. When this was tested in 1901, those 56 soldiers that originally tested this for five days out in the field, uh, they were given the option at any point if they were having intestinal discomfort or any kind of issues or distaste for this food, they had the option to just have their regular ration. And they didn't even choose the regular ration. They actually thought this was pretty good. And, you know, it also gives you a good idea of what the regular ration must have been like because I think this is not the best food in the world. A nice slow sizzle. Wow, that really looks like a burger. The way that one looks, look at that. This, there's too much bacon fat in this, I think, but it's gonna probably taste a lot better. Extra salt. Brian and bacon fat, how brilliant is that? I got this pan because it's blue. All right, let's see if like, Anything's happening on the bottom of this. What's going on here? Oh, just breaks right up. Oh, it is kind of like a charred patty on that side. That's kind of nice. All-American Sizzler. I actually really like the way this is looking at the top. Real nice. Look at that. See that? That's good stuff. That's the way it's supposed to look. Not sure if I'm gonna actually be able to get a patty shape, but. Yeah, it's just smelling worse than it did before. It just doesn't really seem to do much for it. It's extremely unappealing smelling by this point. It's strange. The bacon fat, you know, once it kind of cooks down a little bit, it, it dis that smell, that nice smell disappears. And it's like the more it cooks and the more it gets goes through a process, it seems, doesn't matter what you do with it. I'm going to trace some up on here. Here goes nothing. Okay, so here's, I guess, the grand finale. Um, smells a lot better with bacon. The grain is very dry by this point. There's provoking, but the fat makes it a lot more appealing. The sodium, you know, the, that, that exceptional amount of sodium I threw in this really helped. bacon fat. I mean if fat 
is available. It's like, what kind of survival situation is it? I guess, I guess maybe you'll have that on hand, not regular food, you know, potentially. Oh, chocolate's getting in there. By far the best way to eat this. This is actually pretty good. Like I actually, I, I didn't expect that I'd want more. It didn't smell that great. It doesn't. It doesn't smell very good. No, I don't know. It's still a lot better than before. Of course, bacon fat adds that nice smoked bacon flavor. I should add some more hot chocolate. I'm going to save one chocolate and then meat grain cake. Imagine how incredible that'd be for a soldier that has never eaten anything like this before. Can you imagine how just how awesome this was, innovation-wise, to a soldier. You know, to see something like this. I mean, nobody had probably ever seen anything that they could imagine like that. It's like a lot of modern technology these days. It's you know fascinating to us now. This had to have been fascinating to a soldier back then to try this out when they were in training in the summertime. They're eating one of these per day. Or the 56 guys that ate this back in 1901, and some of them even gained weight. None of them lost weight. They all liked the way it tasted. It tastes so low grade until you fry it in bacon fat. The chocolate is fantastic. This here I'm excited to try. doesn't taste as good again or I don't know it really tastes like the pemmican I'm just calling it pemmican that's what it is meat and grain combined and dried and combined together into a bar that's pemmican you can rehydrate this this technology this food technology developed into greater things that became greater survival rations throughout the years. You know, this thing was taken out of service in 1922. But a lot of the excess numbered ones that were produced and sent out to France in 1918, and they, they called for four million of them. They managed to get like, I think, two million, at least a million produced. They cost 63 and a half cents by that point. I do not know with the 1906 cost to produce potentially more. The technology was newer, ration itself was larger, and potentially higher quality components. This could be a better quality chocolate than that Armour & Company one, the one that people know of. Or this, the chocolate. Great morale boosting component. This has an absolute permeation of the pemmican. It's like transferred its flavor into this thoroughly with an unpleasant grain and beef powder undertone that just really kind of wafts. But then it's like, I would never want to complain with something like this. It's just so, well, this is, I would bet, about as good as it could possibly be for its age and for its quality, which I don't know if it's quality. I don't really know. I think the chocolate is of great quality. Again, the other stuff, not as much, I don't think. You know, but hey, maybe it is. It's ration. A lot of the excess numbers that were sent back to the U.S that were out, sent out to France, and they came back. Think about that waste of money. They were sold off in the civilian market. And this is in 1918. 
not this one. These were all utilized. You know these things, excess numbers, were issued to pilots on the Mexican border. This was also essentially like pretty much like the first pilot survival ration. Like a real effective one at least. Not 100% official, but certainly one of the first, if not the first, effective self-contained long-term storage compressed food type survival ration used by pilots So that's this thing's story. Not bad. That about does it. I mean, this is pretty good, you know? This is like, actually... You know, that, that tastes like food you'd get at a circus. Carnies that make like a strange meal and you can smell that old grease. And it's like a questionable beef. It's not too bad. So this is essentially the great grandfather of American survival rations. U.S. Army emergency ration from December 1906. Packed by the American Compressed Food Company out of Passaic, New Jersey. And I feel like that company did a great job making this thing. It endured for a very long time. Its vacuum seal was still good. That lacquered can with yellow paint that has double coating on the seams. It just... It was a well-protected ration that was built to last indefinitely, to last forever. What a food discovery. What an experience. This is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Hurled. Alright, cool. See ya.